Welcome, everybody, Welcome. to Wednesday night Bible study. Amen. Say, I'm going to get something good tonight. I am going to get something good tonight. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. And I shall be fed. And I shall be fed. I am going to go to Ephesians 3 in the Living Bible. And I pray that Christ will be more and more at home in your hearts, living within you as you trust in Him. May your roots go down deep into the soil of God's marvelous love, and may you be able to feel and understand, as all God's children should, how long, how wide, how deep, and how high His love really is, and to experience this love for yourselves, though it is so great that you will never see the end of it or fully know or understand it, and so at last you will be filled up with God Himself. Now glory be to God, who... By his mighty power that is at work within us, he is able to do far more than we would ever dare to ask or even dream of, infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, or hopes. May he be given glory forever and ever through endless ages because of his master plan of salvation for the church through Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for your word and your truth tonight. We thank you that you're bringing us up higher every time we meet. And I thank you for those nuggets of wisdom, God, that are going to put us over. And Holy Spirit, thank you that we hear your voice clearly. Amen? Amen. Say this, I do follow the Good Shepherd. I do follow the Good Shepherd. I know his voice. I know his voice. And he orders my steps. He orders my steps. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I am spirit led all day long. I am spirit led all day long. I am always in the right place at the right time. I'm always in the right place at the right time. Because my steps are ordered by you, Lord. Because my steps are ordered by you, Lord. Amen. Amen. So can we pull up the first scripture? I know Pastor Jan has been teaching about um, the Holy Spirit. So I got a couple scriptures here to Add, supplement what she's been teaching on. This is a um, verse out of Psalm 32. It says, um, the Lord says, I will instruct you and guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch your progress. And then he says, don't be like the senseless mule or horse that has to have a bit in its mouth to keep it in line. Amen. So the Holy Spirit is wanting us to be like a, what, a rain-trained horse? Where applying just a little pressure, that horse knows where to go. Just like us. He doesn't want to fight with us. He wants us to be like rain-trained. This is the way, Steve. Walk in it. Amen. Um, Amen. He doesn't want to fight. He, he wants us to yield. So um, we need to become pliable, flexible, and just open to what he has for your future. Because so many things that he has for us aren't going to maybe make sense with our carnal mind, but it's the best It's is the best pathway. If we yield to the Holy Spirit and let Him run the show, He's going to guide us along the best pathway for our life. And it says in John 16, 13, the Spirit of truth, it abides in us. And we have a guide inside. He teaches us all things and He guides us into all truth. So we can't be led externally by circumstances. We need to be be, always be God inside minded. Amen. Know that that Holy Spirit is your counselor. If you have to pause for further clarification, or further understanding, that's how you get it. He wants us to know the truth. And that same truth, what's the truth? You know, we've been talking about finances. What's the truth about finances? Wealth and riches in our houses. Um, he gives us the power to get wealth. The blessing of the Lord is making us rich and there's no sorrow. So the Holy Spirit is going to usher us into this wealth. It's the Holy Spirit that's going to do it because God wants all the glory. He doesn't want man to say, I did this. No, this is the Lord's doing. Um, and I love that um, sermon that you taught Like before I even came to the church. The Holy Spirit will lead you and not push you. So um, if it's pressure, 
then sit tight. You know what? That's not God's method of, of um, directing us. He, um, he wants to lead us. He leads us in paths of righteousness. He leads us beside the still waters. Um, it's, it comes down to hearing that voice and resting in Him. Amen. Because the, all the provisions has been, you know, uh, Ephesians 1.3, we've already been blessed with all spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. So He needs to um, give us the wisdom to have that manifest because it's already there. and We're going to get it. So can I see the next scripture, please? Um, this is a um, verse from the Old Testament. I'll read it. The Lord said to Elijah, Go, stand in front of me on the mountain. I, the Lord, will pass by you. Then a very strong wind blew. The wind caused the mountains to break apart. It broke the large rocks in front of the Lord. But that wind was not the Lord. After that wind, there was an earthquake. But that earthquake was not the Lord. You know, insurance companies will say that um, an earthquake was an act of God. God says, I'm not in that. That wasn't, he's not into destruction. Okay, that's the thief that comes to steal, Amen. kill, and destroy. Amen. But that earthquake was not the Lord. The Lord wasn't in that. After the earthquake, there was a fire. But that fire was not the Lord. After the fire, there was a quiet, gentle voice. And that's the Holy Spirit. And that's what we're looking for. We're not... You know, my mom used to say, let's put out a flea, Steve. And I'm, I knew something in my spirit was like, this ain't right. That's, that's Old Testament. That's what Gideon did. Because he wanted a sign. That's like saying, Lord, if this is really you, the next three cars, let them be black Cadillacs. Well, you know what? You can say something you know, naive like that. But it's dangerous because the devil is out in that realm. And he can mess with you. So... <laughs> You want to make sure that you consult the guide inside. And you hear that small, still voice. Amen. This is the way. And so we're not led by, by oh, this must be your day because um, you got a perfect parking spot. What does that mean? No. Always consult the guide because do not be led by external circumstances. And that includes symptoms. Don't let those symptoms, you rule over those symptoms. When they first start, you know, just say, no, you don't have a right on my body. So, um, the next scripture, one more. Um, I just want to emphasize in John 10 how he talks so much about um, us hearing his voice, recognizing his voice. Um, why do you think in this, in this chapter he said four or five times, my sheep know my voice. Why does, why, you know, if he said it once, that would have been enough. That's truth. But he's trying to get something over to us. The enemy has done so much, sown so much doubt. You know, you're not going to hear from God this time. I know he came through you, for you last time, but this time you're on your own. You know, so if you hear those voices, um, if you need to just turn to John 10 and say, you know what, no, no, I hear his voice. I know his voice. I recognize his voice. I am his sheep. And he's leading me. Jesus, okay, the shepherd and his sheep. Jesus said, I tell you the truth. Truly, truly, I say to you, the person who does not enter the sheepfold or the sheep pen by the door or the gate, but climbs in some other way is a thief and a robber. The sheep represent the people of God. The thief and the robber stands for those who would lead them astray. Psalm 23 and Ezekiel 34. The one who enters by the door or the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. Um, the one who guards the door or the gatekeeper, the watchman, opens it for him. And the sheep listen to the voice of the good shepherd. That's us. He, he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he brings out all his sheep out, he goes ahead of them and they will follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. They will run away from him because they don't know his voice. And then could I see um, verse 27 one more time. It says, talking about um, his voice, us hearing his voice. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. So we're talking about financial stewardship. What does that have to do with being spirit-led? Everything. You're talking about healing. What, is that, what, what does Spirit-led have to do with that? Everything. You know what? You can let the Holy Spirit 
um, be your lamp unto your feet and, and a light unto your path and guide you through the scriptures and get what you need. And, and the seed is, is the, the, the word is the seed. Amen. That, that's where we go first for, for whatever promises that you need to, to, to get to overcome this thing that's been reigning over you. Now you're going to reign over it. And, and you're going to let the Holy Spirit, um, that's just cultivating that relationship. That's just getting intimate and just knowing that voice clearly. You know what? This is, this is it because the Lord, He's always going to cause you to triumph. And if you can, if you figure it this way, you know, if I can hear God's voice, I always win, because um, He's gonna, he, He's He's guiding us along the best pathway for our lives. That's, um, he, he said, beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. So it's dependent on your soul prospering, and the more your soul prospers, the more you're gonna see um, the promises and the provision. In the Word of God, effortless, effortlessly, right? Effortless change. You rest and you let Him guide you, and that's His job. That's what the Holy Spirit does. Um. So the enemy does his best to convince us that we don't hear God's voice, but we clearly do. So you have to just take those thoughts captive and speak the truth. I do follow the Good Shepherd. I know his voice. And, and that's what the Lord was telling me a couple of weeks ago on the way to the men's study. Like, Steve, you know, these, some, the devil's really pounding these guys with, you know, the Lord doesn't speak to his people anymore. You know, those kind of lies. But no, he does. And just, just, just renew your mind that, you know what, God has our best interest at heart. So we're going to watch a, a short video tonight. Um, Let's let's look at one more scripture. Um, we've all heard Matthew six thirty three, um, the Luke twelve thirty one. This is the um, promise in in Luke's gospel. Um, Since you don't need to worry um, about security and safety, you don't have to worry about food and clothing. Then pursue God's kingdom first and foremost, and these other things will come to you as well. And that's what we're doing. We're seeking first the kingdom of God, and um, He's going to do the adding. He's going to do the adding to us. Amen. That that's His prescription. That's that's what He wants us to do to stay focused, one mind. You know, this is no. I'm going. I'm going for Your will, God, and I'm 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 in it. So let's let's roll that video, please. It's about thirteen minutes. The president of the company I worked for said, you're going to have to choose between going to Bible college or working here. And I said, if my numbers drop and my production goes down, you can fire me. But I'm telling you right now, my numbers will not drop. In fact, they're going to go up. It was 2007 at the start of the worst recession in recent history. Colin and his wife, April, were planning on having their first child and he had just gambled their only stream of income to attend Karis Bible College. In the natural, such actions would be considered risky, foolish, and irresponsible. But Colin and April Carr were operating by the principles of God's kingdom. This is the story of how one couple from Denver, Colorado, risked their careers, their finances, and their future to seek first the kingdom of God a search that's led them to riches beyond anything they could attain on their own. This is the financial breakthrough of Colin and April Carr. As newlyweds in their mid-twenties, the Cars were living the American dream. By working long hours and taking the business deals that no one else wanted, Colin had become a respected broker at one of the largest real estate firms in the world. While hard work and sacrifice brought them financial success, this focus on self-effort was the very thing killing their relationship with God. 
Prior to going to Karis, we were doing the best we could with what we had. I had a nice job, we had a nice home. However, spiritually and emotionally, we were completely bankrupt. We were under the impression that if we did good, God was happy with us. If we didn't do good, God was disappointed with us. We would work so hard in our own natural flesh to please God and to do all the things we were reading in the Word because that was our heart, to please God. The more we tried to fulfill all of these rules and regulations that were either traditions of man or things we were reading in the Word, we realized we just continually fell short over and over. That condemnation began to manifest in April's life in the form of some very serious health issues. I was fighting thoughts continually of my worth and value. I began to suffer through depression, which we didn't recognize, and then into severe migraine headaches. I just said, Colin, something has to change. Colin and I prayed out to the Lord, and we said, Lord, we need something to change. And the next morning, unknowing to us, we walked into church, happened to look over to our left and saw a huge banner with Andrew Walmick Ministries in Karis Bible College. We took the brochure and after church that day, we said, we've, we've got to try this. We've got to check this out. If you are looking with a veil over your face is the terminology that's used there and you read the Bible, all you'll see is your failures and it'll point out bad stuff and it'll condemn you. If you read it with an open face, through Jesus that you've been changed and read it based on who you are in Christ, this becomes a spiritual mirror that shows you who you are in your spirit. I start raising my hand saying, well, what about this scripture? And what about that scripture? And what about this situation in the Old Testament? He very gracefully responded with the scriptures that explained my question with the explanation of what God was doing or why he was doing it or what was really happening. And after 15, 20 minutes of me raising my hand literally a half dozen times, I made the decision, okay, I'm gonna be quiet now and just listen to what Andrew has to say. All of the strongholds and the wrong beliefs of God were being shattered in a moment. We decided to put the house on the market in Denver and just go all in with Bible college. Within a few weeks of coming to Karis, April was miraculously healed of severe depression and migraines, and our life began to be completely transformed. Thanks to night school, Colin was able to keep his day job by driving to Denver every morning before returning in the evening for class, a daily commute of 120 miles round trip. Though the cars had already uprooted their lives to seek first God's kingdom, the real test of their faith would come the following year, when their only option would be day school. They didn't have night school for the second year program yet, and so year two, we went to school from 8 a.m. to noon. I would get out of class, I would get in my car, drive to Denver, I'd get there about 1.30, I'd work till about five, and then I would drive back to Colorado Springs. About a week and a half into doing that, the president of the company that I worked for, he looked at me and said, that's not gonna work. You're gonna have to choose between going to Bible college or working here. I looked at him and I said, I know you're not gonna understand this, but I'm telling you that God has told me to go to Bible college, and if God told me to go to Bible college, he will provide for me. If my numbers drop and my production goes down, you can fire me, but I'm telling you right now, my numbers will not drop. In fact, they're gonna go up. He looked at me and he literally just walked away. I walked into work every day not knowing if I had a job or not. But I had purposed in my heart that I would serve faithfully as if I was serving unto Christ and that I would do it with excellence and I would do it believing God that he would multiply my time, he would multiply my impact, and that he'd do more for me during the three and a half hours that I could commit to that company than if I could actually work eight or 10 hours in a day. Five loaves, two fish. That wasn't even gonna feed his disciples. What did he do? He lifted it up before the Father. Don't curse what you've got, bless what you've got. Lift it up to God, give Him thanks for the portion you have and He'll multiply it. I witnessed firsthand supernatural favor. I witnessed doors opening that there's no way I could have opened those doors. I witnessed people finding me, calling me, uh, pursuing me and seeking me out. Not only did we not decrease, we actually increased above our previous best year ever by 50% and had our best year hands down. And I did it with my focus being on the kingdom. As Colin focused on the kingdom, God not only multiplied his time and his clients, he also started giving him unique ideas on how he could revolutionize the market. As he would write these ideas down, 
he began to feel conflicted. While Colin and April had a gift and a passion for commercial real estate, their desire to serve God compelled them to go into full-time ministry. We just figured we were headed toward ministry because that's really the heart of our, our marriage and our relationship was to share God. And I was wrestling with this idea of what does that transition look like? And so Andrew knew none of this. He had no idea that this was the number one thing in my heart. He looked right at us and said, I have a very specific word for you. In your mind, you're debating if you're gonna go into full-time ministry or if you're gonna stay in business. The Lord is telling you right now, it's not an either or decision, it's both. You're gonna stay in business and it's gonna be a ministry to you and you're gonna to touch more lives through business than if you went into full-time ministry. Inspired by Andrew's word, Colin began compiling all of the ideas God had given them while at Karen's and developed them into a business plan. The basic idea was to create a niche in the market of commercial real estate, one that focuses on representing clients in the industry of healthcare. Though the real estate bubble had just burst and though his idea was unproven, Colin had learned to follow the peace of the Holy Spirit. And after graduating, he presented this business plan to his boss. I laid the entire business model out for him, assuming that I would do the business model inside of their company. He looked at the business model and just shook his head and said, uh, I don't believe this is a viable business model. If this made so much sense, how come no one else is doing it right now? I walked out of his office, went and got in my car, and I heard the Holy Spirit speak as clear as possible, it's time to start your own company, and it's time to go. All the odds were against us in the natural, and we heard it every way we looked. Someone was telling us why it wasn't a good idea. And of all the things to start in the middle of the recession, please do not start a commercial real estate company. But we knew the hand of the Lord was on it. We knew we had been called and commissioned for such a time as this. All of a sudden, doctors start calling me, referral sources start calling me, people that I had never spoken to in my entire life started reaching out saying, can we find out or can we learn more about what you're doing? With a matter of several weeks, I had, I had more deals than I had ever had in my entire life. By following the peace of the Holy Spirit, Colin and April saw their small startup take off almost instantly. Whereas most businesses were having to cut back due to the recession, the cars were operating by the principles of a different kingdom and had to hire more staff to keep up with demand. And to this day, they have not stopped growing. We have never had a year where we went back. We have always taken new ground, new territory, new markets, and increased financially year upon year, sometimes a hundredfold. We started our company on a card table in the corner of a guest bedroom in a rental house. And today we operate in all 50 states and do business coast to coast with tens of millions of dollars in revenue. The Lord gave us a very clear picture that for each person that came on board, that we would help them achieve things financially they had never achieved, but more importantly, we would help disciple them. It was meeting their needs spiritually, meeting their needs in their family, and the Lord gave us a picture of what it meant to transform lives through business. One of the many families the cars have been able to impact is the Schutz family. In 2010, the cars gave their employee, Kevin, and his wife, Mary Catherine, a stack of Andrew Womack CDs, which inspired them to use their authority in Christ to see their son, Michael, healed of asthma and extreme food allergies. Whereas before, the responsibility of running a national business with thousands of clients would have caused him to work late nights and live in constant stress, Colin continues to operate under the same strength that enabled him to prosper when he was working only three and a half hours a day. We don't work evenings, we don't work weekends. We turn our phones off and we trust the Lord to provide for us and take care of us financially when we're supposed to be resting. One of the greatest blessings in our life is being a homeschool family. We really focus on building relationship with our kids and letting them walk out the process it's just awesome because he gets to spend time with us as a family more and work on his own schedule. It's really been fun because I get to just tag along and learn. You know, I wake up and then I'll do Andrew, I'll read my Proverbs, and then I'll jump into school. And uh, I really enjoy homeschool. It provides a lot of time for me to play with my family. We ought to seek first the kingdom of God 
and His righteousness. And then all of these things come as a byproduct. They aren't what you're focusing on. He's after your heart. And if He gets your heart, I guarantee you, He'll get you everything it takes to accomplish His will in your life. I just want to say thank you to the friends and partners of Andrew Womack Ministry. If you weren't faithful to sow the seed, you wouldn't see me sitting here today. You wouldn't see a woman who's healed, whole, delivered, fruitful, and flourishing in every area of her life. And there's not a day that doesn't go by that I don't look my children in the face and rejoice and thank God for the faithful men and women who sowed into this ministry to get the true gospel to a dying and hurting world. If it had not been for Karis Bible College and Andrew Romick Ministries, we wouldn't have the level of success. We wouldn't have the level of peace. We wouldn't have the unity that we have in our marriage. We wouldn't have the fruit that we have in our children's lives. The revelation of who God is, how much He loves us, what He did for us at salvation, gave us the ability to live the life that we're living today. While the cars continue to fulfill their destiny of ministry through business, they know that none of this would have been possible without the support of the friends and partners of Andrew Womack Ministries. Because of you, one couple from Denver, Colorado, was able to seek first God's kingdom at Karis Bible College and then make disciples of others while succeeding in the sphere of commercial real estate. That was good. Um, could I have a few people tell me what they took out of that the most important? For me, um, he, he set the thermostat when he said, I'm going to produce more in three hours than in eight hours. So he said it. He, he spoke it. Just like setting the thermostat. That's where I'm going. So um, that's how he got it. You know, that was in him. He spoke it out, and, and look, it happened. That's what he believed. What I, what I took out of this is he took his family with him. He didn't do it on his own. He took his family with him. And when you take your family with you, you're going to succeed. Amen. Anyone else? did it without prayer. I mean, he, he said I didn't worry about it. You know, I wasn't putting in 10 hours a day. That's right. He didn't pray. And he let the Holy Spirit guide him. Because he wasn't sure. I, I, are we going to go in full-time ministry? You know, there was, there was questions there. But the Lord made it clear to him. You're going to do both. You're going to be in ministry and business. But, you know, you don't have all the answers um, you get them as you go. You get revelation as you go. He wants us to walk by faith. And you know, when you see this too, um, so many people, they start learning the word and they say, well, I'm going to be a pastor. I'm going to be this. No, no. God wants people in the workplace that are working the word. They are not preaching it at people, but working it so people can see it. And that's what we miss because that's what God wants. You know, in politics, he wants it in businesses and so on. Yeah, and, and there's a lot of people that, you know, they're anointed for business. And the kingdom of God needs those finances. You know, what they're bringing in to, to fund the gospel. Yeah, I mean, we all have um, our, our anointings, our, our lanes, you know. We just have to find where that is. You know, John Maxwell... Um, talks a lot about leadership and and he you know he says no you find out where that where that child's ten is and you, and you sow into that you know because so many people think let you know let's let's assess him let's see where the sixes and sevens are so we can bring him up to eights and nines so he can become average but no he's your 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 children us we have we have tens there's areas that we're tens. And so that's where we need to focus. That's where we're anointed. That's where we're going to make the biggest impact by staying, getting in your lane. Finding your lane and then staying in your lane. And sometimes that takes a while. It does. Like, what, what am I supposed to do, Lord? I can't just hear, wait here all day. No. Well, you explain what waiting really means. Like a waiter. Yep, that is a priority. He didn't focus on, oh, I got to get this done, I got to do that, I got to do all this work. He just made 
that's a priority and have to focus on that. Very good. Yeah. Because you can serve God or mammon. It's one or the other. Yeah, what, what Donna was saying is exactly what I was thinking about when I was watching this. She said we're going to keep a certain time open for Sunday. We're, gonna, we, we're not going to run busy from Sunday. Yeah. The type of you know, business she was in, it would have been really easy oh, yeah. to meet her clients on Sunday to further his business. Starting up a new business, it would be really tempting to not um, start focusing more on the business to make sure it's going, but he listened to the Holy Spirit and he looked at his heart. And yeah, and trust, yeah. trusting that you know what, um, me working on Sunday is going to hurt me because that's that's got to be family time, and you know he's he's relying on the Lord to add add these things to him. He's not trying to conjure up more business. I mean, that just resting, that just shows you that that's where his trust is. He's trusting the Lord that he's going to bring him what more business than he's ever had. You know, there's another testimony that the guy was told he had to work on weekends. And he said, no, I'm not going to work on weekends. And they said, God says. And, and um, this was the judge who hires him and anyway, he stuck to what, you know, I mean, the, the company said, you know, you were strong in this, you did a wonderful job, they put him off on weekends, and his pay just increased, and it was because he made a statement that made good sense in front of the judge, and then he was fired. Yeah, the thing in, in that family that you just said, the, the family also was involved with the decision making they stood with him and mm -hmm. his wife she like you know you know look what look what that young boy and young girl has here uh, involved in the church as well and it's just a blessing to to see to hear from the children how you can tell the word is working for him already right. at such a young age said what pinnacle for anybody who works with that ministry um, they really work on them having their family in order a husband and wife and the family in order and if they're not they leave them of their position until they get in into order and I thought whoa and that was Kathy and Len Mink how many years ago hmm. so, you know yeah, treating tough. the wife good treating the kids good treating the husband good you know Way back when gospel talk time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so strife between you and your spouse or you and your kids is going to contaminate the ministry. You know, you're, you're going to bring that to the church and, and so that, that's keeping the devil out, making sure the family Absolutely. is intact. Absolutely. Because it's going to, God loves his people too much to, you know, um, to let them be under someone that's doing, you know, shenanigans on the side, you know, he's, he's not, he's not sold out, but, you know, you're not, not saying you need to be perfect, but, you know, that, that unity, that harmony in your family yes. is going to carry into the ministry. Right. You, you have to, if there's a husband and a wife, if there's strife there, if the husband is working in ministry and there's strife in a home, he will not be successful in his ministry because he cannot hear from the Holy Spirit because he's hearing from the, That's right. the That's devil right. through his wife. So mm -hmm. there has to be that unity there. Mm -hmm. First things first, right? That's God's plan, though. And, and they're just listening, yielding to the Lord's leading. You know, boy, I want, to, I, want you to, to, I want you to get cleaned up so I can really use you. Because um, look out when you when that family is in order, then you got the power of agreement. You've got someone to encourage you when you're down. You know, it's that's how we're supposed to work as a team. But you know, Doctor Dollar was saying for with him and Kathy for a while, um, and he did take counsel from Kenneth. 
that you get that in order. You're traveling too much. You get that in order, you know, because, uh, you know, he speaks for Copeland's. Uh, if you can't, if you and Taffy can't be in order, you're not going to speak here. Ooh. And that would contaminate the whole ministry. Yeah. So it's, it's, yeah. And you just need to be led on a, on a day to day, hour to hour basis, because even even Kenneth said that, um, you know, his his ministry was flourishing. He had like twelve different. I think it was you know different ministries, and, and he was like, um, the Lord was said, the Lord said basically half these things that you're in, I'm not in. I never told you to do these things, yeah, and and you're trying to figure out why you're why you're so tired and and um, because you are you're you're ministering to place in places that I never sent you, yes. and so sometimes you know you can think I I got to go save the world I got to go help ever no you need to um, preserve yourself and you need to be led because um, yeah there's there's people that have been led to the hospital to go and pray for everyone in there, like John Lake. But you better make sure that <laughs> that it's the Lord, you know. Because you can uh, the devil can eat your lunch. You know, see that healing stuff didn't work. Well you weren't led to, to that to that environment. So um it, it was a wake up call for him. Like, you know what, I need to find out what God wants me to do. Because uh you know, you can start being confident and thinking, uh, I'm just on my own now. I'm, I, I got it here. I got it now, God. Yeah. I'm up, you know, thanks for your help. No, you need to continue to to get that get that word, get that guidance. Well, you know, it's getting that communication. That's we don't have communication with our spouse and with our children. We're not going to have communication with God. And today I was listening to a testimony that the husband and wife, he was just, you know, kind of getting off. And before you know it, he's messing with the secretary. And before you know it, he lost everything. Because, you know, he forgot his family. It, it's, it's sad. It is. But we just... um have to just be aware that you know the, the enemy you know we have to know our covenant but we need to know when to lay down the law we need to know the law we need to know what to what's ours and um, when he comes in when he creeps in because he's just so you know those little foxes you know that that's how subtle it is and um, man so um, any anything else from I'll just share this a little bit. I don't want to get into it a whole lot, but um, Sunday, late Sunday afternoon, I was informed that my brother was in critical condition and he was basically on his deathbed. And I have talked to him about the Lord, and I, I think he had accepted the Lord, but on Sunday I had a real uneasy feeling that for sure if he did or not. So I went up to the hospital to minister to him and uh, the, the first thing the first thing I was thinking about he's not going to listen to me because um, I and Jan are look kind of looked at front in our family that, that we're a little bit different <laughs> so that's okay mm -hmm. but um, so I went up there and started talking to him and he was the first of all I just prayed and prayed in the spirit and prayed over him because he was not in a condition to really to take into what I was saying to him and the whole thing. I I got there and the first thing he did, he started um, throwing up, he had been throwing up blood for about two days and here and I, I get in there and he starts throwing up blood. And he had, um, they had a pan there for him to throw up into that pan was about this wide and He filled that with blood, well, <laughs> you know, so that was really, um, that was really for me to, where is my faith at? Can he be healed of this? And so I I started praying with him, and I told him, 
he was, he was, he was, uh, I just want to die, you know. And so first of all, I said, okay, you want to die? You, you know for sure where you're going. And then he's, then he, he perked up a little bit and he says, yeah. He says, I know where I'm going because uh, a couple months ago he had passed out when he was driving and he went through the ditch and out into a plowed field and his car stopped. He didn't know how he got there or where he was or anything. That was a couple months earlier. He said to me, I know, he says, somebody was watching over me. And that opened the door for me to, <laughs> to uh, yeah, he, yeah, definitely, your angel took care of you. Mm-hmm. And so I was able to minister the word to him and pray with him. And I was there to, I don't know what time did I come home, 11, 30, 12 or something. And, and basically, there was a point when the Holy Spirit says, you're done here, mm-hmm. you, you, need to, you need to go now. And when I left, I had, I had an assurance that if he passed on, he was going to heaven. I, I didn't question it after that. And so I've been going to the hospital now on a daily basis. Today I didn't make it there, but um, what is what really checks your faith out, where you're at with your faith, is when all these other people who are unbelievers <laughs> come into the room and are talking all this unbelief stuff, and, and if you can stay strong, you have to stay strong at that point. Mm-hmm. And, you know, not that you're being strong for yourself, but you're being strong for him. And so, um, like yesterday, um, he started coughing at one point when the people were in the room there. And right away, oh, all you need is you need some whiskey and you need some peppermint snaps. And I said, no, no, he needs the word. <laughs> I said, you. said, and you know, and, and after after those people left, I was able to pray with him some more, and and he, uh, you know, he hadn't been sleeping at all through all this, so he was finally to the point where he would fall asleep, and then he would wake up, and then he, and then then there was times he would ask me for prayer for him, so the word was getting true to him. It was a divine setup. Yeah. 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 He, you know, um, he was, he's, he, he's been married twice. He lost two wives. And now he had a, last, is a couple of years, he had a girlfriend li- living in his house whose health was bad. And she had gotten uh, cancer just recently, or she's had it before, and it got worse. And so she was in the hospital at the same time. And she did on on that Sunday morning. She did pass away, and so he he had that to deal with too. So, so to, yeah, and so like, um, he's finally regained enough strength and health that they're gonna allow him to move back from the hospital to the nursing home, and they're gonna make that move tomorrow while her funeral is on tomorrow. So, <laughs> so uh, he definitely needs you know. He needs no but you were able to um, recognize that uneasiness in yeah. your spirit and um, an unction to, to go and, and you were a doer of the word. Mm-hmm. So you were led and you had that peace once you were obedient, right? I yeah. mean, you, sh- you were able to. Yeah, there was, you know, through that early part of the night, there was time when I was starting to doubt, you know, okay, God, are you doing your work here? And you're supposed to. Uh-huh. But then when it came to that time, the Holy Spirit says, "You're you're done here. You you need to go home." So, and I went home. I went home with assurance that everything was going to be okay, e- yeah. even though they were saying the nurse and the doctors were saying, "I don't think he'll make it through the night." I left knowing that yeah. I was going to see him the next and day. And you had that peace of God yeah. ruling in your heart yeah. as a governor. Like my 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 assignment is over. I can go home now. Yeah. But you know, you know. You know when you when that peace is there, okay, and and you know when the resistance is there, the enemy bringing in the people with all their carnal ideas. But you just you're wise. Mm-hmm. You're wise as a serpent, you know, and you just you you just choose your moments, yeah. and then you just you give it out. Yeah, give out the word. Yeah, because I like um, I knew you were out of town on Monday, so um, 
when you called me, I was just leaving the hospital when you said you weren't going to make it. Oh. So I, I was, I was, I felt freedom to leave and come here for the study on Monday night. So I, I came here and did the study. <laughs> I, I didn't know what kind of job I did, but I was here. <laughs> and it's exhilarating to yeah. know that your brother is going to yeah. be in heaven. So, Glenn, can we have one more? Uh, there's a couple more scriptures I wanted to share. Uh, we were going to read a little bit tonight, but uh, we'll read a couple scriptures. Um, let's go to um, 2 Corinthians 10. So, um, this has to do with our minds. The battle is in the mind. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So, the gatekeeper in our, in our soul is our mind. You know, we need to be a good steward, custodian. And, and when the mood, when you have a bad, you know, depressing day or, you know, just things don't seem right, no, you, you speak what you want. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I have a merry heart. I let the peace of God rule in my heart. Last night, you know, we were off for like, I was off work for like five, six days. Just thinking of, I went to bed early, wanted to prepare, you know, and, and just, I just started getting attacked in my mind. Just thinking about, you know, tomorrow and, you know, how, how am I going to, and, and Keisha was there, thank God, and she said, you know, why don't you turn on some worship music? Amen. And my body was just like, almost like, it was like an attack. But it was my mind that was under assault. And um, I needed to, um, that, that worked, the worship music, just Amen. Hillsong, just, Amen. I'm like, man, it didn't happen instantly, but by the sixth, seventh song, now, like, I, I know where to go now. I got this Hillsong, it's like over an hour, all these songs, all Hillsong, and I'm like, thank you, Lord, for using my wife. Because, you know, sometimes when you're in a battle, you don't, Things like that aren't so obvious. Oh, just turn on music. you know. Turn. But I'm like, I took that word. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do that. Because I feel like calling 911. I mean, I felt like my heart was... I'm like, calm down, Steve. I think on Sunday mornings when somebody comes to the church on Sunday morning and they have a they're facing a mountain or a problem of some kind, get involved with the worship and, and the praise, and it goes away. <laughs> right. Or, or come into the prayer room yeah. where we alternate with song and tongues. The devil yeah. don't have a chance. Right. They don't want to, I mean, it's just, that's, that's a powerful, that's how he's leading us. You know? It's just the, powerful back there. One of the things I use a lot, big one, you know, I'll wake up real early sometimes in the morning, and I'm like you, my mind starts going about what I have to do that day or what's going on or who's who's doing what and that. I just start praying in tongues. Mm -hmm. That calms me right down, praying in tongues at mm -hmm. that time. Um, if I would open up the door, I'd probably hear the music because Jan's got music going that early in the morning, but. I, I, I just start praying in tongues, and mm -hmm. that, that really helps me. Yeah. That fear can really cripple a person, right? I mean, boy, it, it can really wreak havoc on your body, and just, just the fear for flight response, you know, how that, wow, that Jan, panic. Can... Jan's dad always, always used to say he'd wake, wake up tired in the morning because he was working all night. Well, that I think back about that when I used to laugh about that when I think back of it, my age now I think yeah that's what I'm doing I'm working <laughs> I'm supposed to be I, I found myself I was saying I just said like three times last night I, said, I let the peace of God rule in my heart and I refuse to worry about anything I just said that I'm like no I'm not touching this no tomorrow when it comes it's going to be time but I don't need to borrow tomorrow's troubles by trying to figure out what, you know, am I going to be as because you're not going to be as productive. You just missed six days. You're you're not in the flow. Where did that come from? I can do all things through Christ, which Amen. strengthens me. Yeah.
Um, it also goes with setting your mind on things above and not on things on the earth. I mean, I told testimony, I think probably a couple of times, but one time I was on my way to work and I was really mad at Brian for something. I mean, I was really hot and in my mind, I was going over what I was going to say to him, you know, mm. and, um, I don't think I had praise and worship music on, but I remember listening to Kenneth Copeland and he said to praise. So I just, you know, switched my thought process and started just thanking and praising God. Like I said, I didn't have praise and worship music on, but probably in a minute, I could not remember what I was angry at. I had awesome. no idea what I was mad about just the minute before. And it never came back to me. I mean, not like when I stopped praising and worshiping. That's, it's like, oh, now I, you know, yeah. it was just gone. Awesome. <laughs> you know, it's like those songs. It's like those songs that Debbie had. He never stopped working. He never stops working. Even when I don't think he's working, he's, and that's what I keep going through my mind all the time. Because one thing, when you're teaching Bible studies, you know it's going to hit you. That's why you be prepared and you hit him first. Mm -hmm. And you don't let the devil see you sweat. Mm -hmm. Because he'll go further than you want him to go and he'll take more than you ever thought he could get. But when you start those songs, he'll never stop working. Even when I don't feel he's working. Feel, feel, feel. The, yeah. the thing I've got to get at, get so much as get those stinking, stinking out of there, that feeling, yeah. that feeling. And when we <laughs> sow into the feelings, he's got us right by the tongue. And you go, no, no, devil, no, not. And you start just slamming it. That's right. Lynn, one more scripture. Uh, Philippians 3.13, and we need to um, forget the past. I'm still not at all that I should be, but I'm bringing all my energies to bear on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. Okay, I wrote down, the enemy pulls you into the past. He causes shame, then uses that shame along with fear to prevent us from obeying the leadings and the promptings of the Holy Spirit. So he'll lead you, he'll tempt you to do something, and then, um, which is shameful, and then the devil will, will use that shame keep you stuck, you know, and that fear. Um, it, you can't look at the rear view mirror and, and when you're going forward. And so just, you know what, the best thing is, you know, yesterday is, is gone. It's in the tomb. And tomorrow's in the womb. So we, we have that ability. Sometimes when you are seriously offended and hurt, um, like, I have a right to be, yeah, you have a right to stay in bondage because if you can't let that go, it's going to, you know, you can't move until you forgive and let go of the past. And that's just something we all need to hear on a regular basis because um, I'm redeemed from shame. Amen. You know, I'm set free from fear, but um, those things try you know, and come in. and when you look at it, too, when you when you when you have that intimacy with God and you realize who you are, who you are, I'm Jesus' sister. I, I'm just like Jesus. You know, and Daddy loves me, and I've got the Holy Spirit that will never leave me. First. And you just start pelting yourself with mm -hmm. that. And like you say, how can you stay angry at someone? You know? But it, it, you know what? I used to. You know, and whenever I'm teaching, and don't ever think I'm talking to you, I'm talking about what I used to do. Mm. And if it helps somebody, take it and use it. But the pity parties, nobody would come to them. And I don't want to come to anybody else's. Right? That's right. That's right. Yeah. All right, we're going to take communion. Dee Dee's supposed to report on her babies, I think. 
No, you guys, I was going to tell you something. Um, I just thought about this. When um, we got to Zoom Erica's birth on a Zoom call, and they brought the babies out, the babies look fine, and then all of a sudden I seen like three, four nurses heading over to Callen. He was the littlest one. He was the one that they said he was going to have some problems because he, he was under five pounds. And Tom turned and looked at me, and he says to me, did you? And I said, stop. Stop. But did you? Stop. Dee Dee, you've seen the nurse. Stop. Stop. Yes. We don't agree with that. Stop talking. And he kept trying to bring me into it, and I just said, stop talking. I seen it. Stop talking. Now pray in the spirit, and I'm going to go and raise a hallelujah because I'm not talking to you. Now stop talking. And the Zoom call got cut out. And Tom goes, why did it get cut out? And he's getting out. I said, stop. Stop talking. Stop. Stop. You just praise God that everything is okay. And hell, hell, God is not bringing them babies unless they can thrive on their own. That is our prayer. That's what we believe. Now stop. All of a sudden, the Zoom call came back up, and everything was fine. But did it? it I didn't think Tom caught it because I did catch it. I was watching what was going on. And they were shaking his hands, and you could see they were picking him up. And all of a sudden, he goes, did you see that? And I'm like, yeah, of course, you would see that. And, and, but, but like you said. And you just really made the enemy mad. She won't give me any words to work with. And that's, that's right. And that's true. And that was true because I kept saying, stop. Because he kept want, he wanted to talk about it. Oh, yeah. And I said, no, we're going to talk about what we want. And what we want is that babies will thrive. We're not so, going to negate anything we've been praying for. No, and no. And wrong words can, can reverse everything. And now our babies today, um, Hudson was the last one to come home. So last week, he came out, and he was only two days when Erica took um, Callan in. So they couldn't really judge if he gained, lost any weight since coming out of NICU. So he had to go today. He went, he gained over a pound, and he has grown over an inch. And the doctor told Erica today, all my twins that have been coming in here, have lost weight. Your babies have come in and have gained weight and they have grown. Mm. And, I, and that's true. That's the word. And that's what we're talking about, not being led by circumstances yes. or what you yes. see. Yes. You had that guide inside telling you, no, don't agree with. with no. Because you know your words produce, and I remember this couple, and you guys do too, the baby was born and the, the intestine and one of the ovaries were on the outside. I said, don't talk. The doctors were standing there and the nurses, I said, no, and don't say a word. And I said that several times. And even after they took the babies, I said, no, those babies are going to be fine. But you know what? And even after they said, you know, that's what saved those babies' lives. Thank you for not letting us talk. But it's true. We destroy things it, with our that own That pressure, words. though, is so real. Yes, oh. You're looking at it. <laughs> but what's more real is yes. what's going on in the spirit realm. That's right. Thank you, Lord, for those powerful testimonies. That's supposed to be normal. And, and the stronger we get, you know what? It's not going to be hard to muzzle your... Speak what you want and then be quiet. Amen. Father, we thank you that you are Jehovah Rapha. You heal the brokenhearted. I thank you, Lord, that you are chastised so that we can have peace. And by your stripes, we are healed and made whole. Nothing Amen. missing, nothing Amen. broken. Amen? Amen. Say this, I have a covenant with God. I have a covenant with God. The guide is inside of me. The guide is inside of me. Greater is he that's in me. Greater is he that is in me. Than he that's in the world. Than he that is in the world. And nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. Amen. Let's Amen. drink.
You know what I love, though, is like Dee Dee, how she's got it. How, you know, how you got it, how you're getting this. This makes me so excited because it's the Holy Spirit that's teaching you. Yeah. Just like we're hearing all these testimonies at Karis. Well, this is like Karis. Yes. I mean, we're getting the same word. Yes. So we should see the same results, right? Amen. Amen. It doesn't take going to Colorado. No. No. God's word works on Mount Vesuvius. All right, I'm going to get chastised because I'm two minutes over. But okay, so I bless this offering, the tithes and the offerings. Father, I thank you that you measure it back a hundredfold. In Jesus' name, say, I have given, and it is given to me, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am out of debt. My needs are met. I have plenty more to put in store. Wealth and riches are in my houses. And my seed is mighty upon the earth. And my seed is mighty upon the earth. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen.